And it's gotta be Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to yet another episode of Color Commentary, where we give you views from a different side. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can get even more content from us. On uh, Now, let's give you some detail on what we're doing today. On May the 25th, 1977, an incredible world event happened. I was born. That's right. And also, Star Wars came out. That's right. May 25th, 1977 was the date, was the year and date that Star Wars came out. And so now here in 2018, about roughly about 20 or so years later, on May the 25th, we have yet a new Star Wars movie. This time we're talking about Star Wars Solo. So we're going to see what this movie is all about. It's yet another prequel. So it's interesting because Star Wars nowadays is actually kind of building on both ends. On one side, they're taking the regular uh, story, for lack of a better word, and keep building on the end of it. But on the other side of it, in order to make actual good movies, they're actually doing prequels to the original Star Wars series. So Solo gives us the background behind uh, one of the the best heroes, obviously, in that series. Han Solo talks about how he became who he was, how he met Chewbacca, how he met Lando Calrissian. This movie takes place, I would say, before Rogue One. So if you're watching, if you try to figure it out, I would watch like uh, one, two, and three, then Solo, then Rogue One, and then now you're going into Star Wars A New Hope. Okay, so let's bring on our co-host here. First, starting out with uh, Mr. Uh, Charlie Taylor. Mr. Charlie, what's happening over there, sir? What's up, guys? What's up, guys? What's up, guys? Nothing much, you know. It's a it's a rainy day today, but uh, you know I'm excited to talk about Solo. Had a good time checking it out. Um, thought it was pretty pretty good movie. Good watch. Kept me entertained. So you know I had a little fun with it. I'm not the biggest Star Wars fan, even though y'all see all the stuff. This is more for the, <laughs> for the people that love Star Wars that we do their parties. Can't face party easy. But, um, you know, it's, um, I'm ready to get into this. You know, I think we'll have a, have a good show on uh, Solo. Nice, nice. All right. And let's bring on Mr. Uh, Danny Toy Quick here. Uh, Mr. Quick. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it is it's your boy danny j quick um i'm i'm here man it's it's a rainy day we ate a lot today we had a good time happy birthday rashad uh shout out to you i didn't realize that you were born on the day that star wars came out so that's a good fun fact um that's right now i know why you're the biggest nerd out of all three of us I understand that. <laughs> I, that's because I'm, I'm, I am the tallest of us. Yes, that's correct. Let's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. we'll get into it, man. I'm ready. <laughs> okay, and of course, I'm Rashad Waters, owner and founder of Block Band Music and Publishing, a company that provides music and instruments to marching bands all across the nation. I don't have a lot of Star Wars stuff on or here, but I do have my Imperial drummer here. And I got some stuff that y'all haters are gonna love. Check this out right here. You got Galact. You got MP uh, Darth Vader in the form of Galactus holding the Death Star. Boom! Autograph by some guy. I don't know. I don't know his name. <laughs> Which I can give us a props. Did autograph. And also <laughs> for the true haters, hate, 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 hate. We got the Luke Cage Imperial Stormtrooper. There it is right there, baby. Y'all don't even know what that's all about. Also autographed by some random guy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into this. Mr. Charlie Taylor, how did this movie win? Well, I think I think the movie won just I like the the characters really played played the um I guess the 
the older characters that they're supposed to be. So the tie-in on, I, they were very believable, I say. I say Solo mm-hmm. did a great job. Um, uh, darn, what's this boy's name? Donald Glover. It's off. Yes, I do know his real name. I'm talking Lando, about <laughs> Lando Calrissian. You talking about his, his Star name, Wars on, name on the message I just <laughs> sent to you? Lando. Lando. That's all I was about to say. Lando. Yeah. It's oh, okay, boy. ladies and gentlemen. He, Charlie is just he's sticking to his script. He's got to be the guy that doesn't I, know anybody's name. So he's just being. Hey, you got to do when you got a role. You got to play your role. You got to play the role, guys. You right. know how I do. But Lando, <laughs> Lando did this thing. I like. Um, he played. He played his part the best. Like he was probably the closest to the actual, you know, traditional characters on the older movies as you know than everybody I, I was uh, that I saw. So Lando did very well. I think Solo did well as um, also, and even the new characters that they brought on. My girl from Game of Thrones, you know, I call it Daenerys, Targaryen, <laughs> the Charis, the Charis. Start burning people up. Of course, she's burning people up on this movie too. But um, you know, but she did a great job. I was glad to see. I'm, I'm glad to see her in the big screen on some more, Whoop. you know, prominent roles. So. I think I think they, they they did they win they won with the the cast that they put together. Um, the story was good. It was fun. It wasn't too close, too much of a tie-in to all the rest of the movies. It had its own kind of vision on the story. Um, they did throw a lot of Easter eggs in there uh, for a lot of the Star Wars people, um, but I it didn't it didn't it can stand on its own. It can, the movie can stand on its own. It could be a good watch. I don't think it was quite as good as um, Rogue One, but Rogue One was a little you know, more serious, and you know they, they had a lot more comedy in this one, so it was a fun watch uh, when I went to the movies. I enjoyed it the first time I saw it. And also, you know, the graphics. I mean, I mean they always do good with the graphics. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, William Falcon looked really cool, had that, that nose thing on it that they ended up shooting off. So mm-hmm. uh, kind of like how they... I guess made them made made it go back to the original look of the Millennium Falcon by the uh, middle end of the movie, but um, yeah, all the graphics were really really good. They always do so good with the uh, with the different types of aliens and creatures. You know, seeing like mm-hmm. the uh, bar scene that where Lando and them were, and seeing all the different types of monsters and stuff. I kind of, kind of, that reminded me more of like the older movies. So mm-hmm. it kind of felt like it was it stayed true to what the um you know Star Wars was built upon not like some of the newer movies everything CGI'd and you know you know it's you can kind of tell if they're not really there like you know like right. these little puppet things flying around and the little goofy looking creatures that kind of brings you back to Star Wars. Okay. Um, yeah, I think I think those are all all the things that I can really kind of just throw off the top of my head where where they really won. Um, mm-hmm. this movie. So, what about you guys? All right. Danny. Uh, <laughs> to me, um, I'm going to say I think that they won in the storytelling. They, um, I think they did a good job and I, I actually, th- they use a lot of tropes in this movie. They did, they painted by all the numbers they did everything that's supposed to be in a movie. They, you know, established a hero. They raised him up. They knocked him down. They let him be a hero. And then they, there was a twist. But the they didn't do everything in order. But I liked it. I enjoyed watching this movie. Me and my son went and saw it. And uh, I was just sitting in there in the theater like, oh, shoot. Like, I didn't expect that to happen yet when when uh, your girl um, came up, when your girl Kira tapped them on the shoulder at the bar. Like I didn't expect her to be there. I expected them right. to gather towards the end. Um when the double crosses happened, when all the double crosses happened, I knew um when they said that early in the movie, he was like, don't trust anyone. I knew that either somebody was gonna get double crossed, but I didn't know that he was gonna be smart enough to to build it in. And even while it was happening, I didn't know if he was part of the double cross or if he was, you know, truly you know, double cross. cross. If Beckett, the cross on the cross. Yeah, if he was <laughs> the cross on the cross, being crossed. If um Woody Woody Harrelson's character uh, Beckett, um yeah. I didn't know if he 
was, you know, if he was actually gonna turn on him or or what. And then at the end, when uh, spoiler alert, um, Han shot first. Like that's a that big thing. So funny to me. Oh, I love that. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> that was so oh. funny. He was like. Well, he might like one of them old dudes. Like, all right, boy, all right, I done told you. To. <laughs> you shot me, son. I didn't even get to get right. a statement out. I didn't even get to, get to say my last monologue. But, uh, right. <laughs> um, I think they're going with all of that. And like Charlie said, the uh, the 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 set designs and the and the graphics were great. Like that that scene with him, the Kessel Run scene, it was so great. Like the nice. um, zoom in past the big, the mal or whatever it was called, the, 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 the black hole in the torrent. And then the big monster like being out there and reaching out for him. It was like, you see the ship out here and then the monster's trying to get to him. And he's like, I just need to get away. Like I really love the tension in that. And uh, I think the cinematography and the colors and all of that um, helped out with that a lot. And um, I think that they did a they did a really good job with the with the the characters. I think they won with Han Solo and Chewbacca, especially. Um, I never cared about. I'm not a big Star Wars fan. I never have been, um, but I never really cared. Even though I'm not a big Star Wars fan, I never really cared about Han Solo at all in any of the movies. You know, he just seemed like a, a arrogant dude who was just like, hey, you know, I'm here. I'm not, you know, I'm not the hero, but. They made me, you know, feel for him. And when when um, Kira said, you know, I know something about you. Nobody else knows. I know that you're a good guy. Like that was the was one thing I wasn't expecting her to say. And he, you know, he really felt that. And, and I understand his character better now that they've made, mm -hmm. more, you know, so mm -hmm. I think that the entirety of the movie depended um, rested upon, you know, him pretending not to be a good guy and actually being one. And uh, I, and that realization in the movie was something that, that was very effective to me. So that's the biggest thing for me. What about you, Rashad? Oh, man. Um, I really liked it, man. Um, to me, this movie is everything that uh, The Force Awakens should have been. Right? The Force Awakens is getting a brand new crop of people into Star Wars again. It's connecting to the old universe but trying to do something different and to me the force awakens just basically copied stuff from the original star wars trilogy versus with this movie you have the opportunity to be nostalgic and see some things that you've seen before like the characters like the millennium falcon but yet it had its own life it wasn't um it wasn't a slave to the stories and the things that we've seen before and i really like that um this movie is also a thrill ride like there's so many scenes in the movie. Like there's like three chase scenes in the movie. Like the first one is when they're first trying to get away on um, Corellia in the hover car. That was a good scene. The whole train scene was really awesome. The virtual reality was great there. And then the Kessel Run. Like all three of those chase scenes, they were a thrill ride. There was so many times I'm watching it. We watching it in 3D. I'm like, whoa! Like oh man! Like I felt like I was in one of those rides that you get on where it's a stationary ride, but you sit inside of it and closes you in and they show you a movie like you're on a roller coaster and it's like throwing you around and stuff. Like it really felt like that. Like I really was immersed in like this thrill ride of what was going on. And also the droid liberation thing was cool too. Like I found I found my purpose in life, you know. <laughs> Be free. <laughs> like that was just so hilarious hilarious. to be how it worked. <laughs> to the revolution. Um, that reminded me of uh of uh, Thor a little bit. When I was like to the revolution, you know, like when uh when the rock dude they got the guns and they started like doing the little revolution oh, yeah. around. That's that's what that that's what she reminded me of when they were like all the oh yeah yeah okay. Running, you got pamphlets. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's an interesting little thing. There was actually music from the original uh, Empire Strikes Back there. Um, during the uh, asteroid scene, Wahan is piloting the Millennium Falcon from the Empire Strikes Back. The music is... Um, da, 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 like They used that, that exact same music in this movie, which I thought was cool because they did it during the Kessel Run. So it really just added to the flavor of Han being such a great pilot. Um, 
let me see here. Going on what you just said, Danny, you know, I'm not the biggest Star Wars uh, nerd either. I think I know more than most people. No, I think I think you Why are. Are you laughing that, at me? That last little <laughs> bit. I think you might. I am a music. I'm a music nerd, dog. On it. Music nerd. Okay. You can see it behind your head. Huh? Behind so my head is a trumpet. Yes, yes, yes. And some notes on the wall. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm a music person. I am, I am that now. Don't get it twisted there. That's my you life. Own, you own black but, um, band. That's right. <laughs> so, yeah, I know a little something about music. A couple things. But anyway, y'all try to take my time here. Um, I'm not, like I said, I'm not the biggest Star Wars nerd, but I know more than the average person. And I do know that from... There was a big thing called Han shot first, just like what you said, Danny. And what what that's all about is that when Star Wars first came out in 1977, Han had this fight against um, the bounty hunter that was trying to arrest him. And he shot the bounty hunter first. Then when George Lucas re-released the movies, what he did was he made it so that the bounty hunter shot first and then Han shot because he didn't want... Han, he felt that Han shooting first would make him less of a hero. So a lot of people were upset about that. So this whole thing about Han shot first, you know, and so it was cool that they were exactly paying a, a testament to that whole thing. Well, yeah, yeah, Han shot first. Yeah, he shot so Han, and he killed. So, so is uh, Han's, um, did he go to Cobra Kai? <laughs> Cobra Kai? Strike, strike first, strike with no mercy, strike fast. <laughs> hey, strike fast. So. <laughs> um, and I also love L3, like that girl. It was so cool. Uh, you know, it seems like Star Wars is really relaying on these um, these droids to uh, to inspire the comedy. Obviously, going back to RTD2 and C3PO, but now mm -hmm. they're using new droids. They keep killing them off. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, but they're great. I would have loved to have seen like a relationship between her and uh, K2SO from uh, Rogue One. Like they seem like they would be perfect for each other. Like they just <laughs> get that same attitude. <laughs> um, it, it was also cool to see a robot that was actually inherently female. Like there has been other, there've been other female robots in Star Wars, but like mostly there'll be like C3PO, but just with a female voice. This one actually was, built like a female she walked like a female like it's cool to to include that type of stuff and not just be so gender biased when that type of stuff is concerned um and last thing i really like uh donald glover as um as billy d williams man like when you first see him i'm sorry when you first hear him before you even see him it's like oh my god he sounds just like billy d williams like I, mean, I straight wanted the Colt 45. Y'all don't know, y'all don't get that reference, but that's what uh, Billy D. Williams used to talk about. Say, hey, you know, come on, get a nice Colt 45. You know, that was that was what he used to do in his commercials. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, it was different because everybody else was like acting like their person, but he was like doing an impersonation of Billy D. Williams. And with that, it was like, I really like that. Like, you could really see the connection between his character and then the ability, the Lando Calrissian from the 70s and 80s. All right. So cool. So now let's talk about how did this movie fail? So let's, uh, let's go because I don't even know if you liked the movie, Danny. So that's uh, you haven't said really if you liked it or not. So let's go ahead and take it to you first. So you see if you were the contrarian. How did I, this movie fail, Danny? I did like it. But, you know, we do play our roles on this show. So... <laughs> Contrarian. This movie did fail in a lot of ways. Now, I, I did, like I said, I did like the movie. I enjoyed watching it. They did a great job with it. But I think Disney, because Disney owns Star Wars, they have to always bring the A game. Like they always have to, especially with a property like Star Wars and a name like Han Solo, they have to. It has to be tip top. It has to be the best. It has to 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 have that impact. In this movie, there were several things you like. You enjoyed um, Donald Glover as Lando Calrissian, but I just didn't. I um, I think he did a a good enough job, like you said. I feel like he was doing an impersonation of Billy D. Williams playing Lando Calrissian, and certain certain spots, I really felt like he he did a good job. Like at the very end, that last scene between him and Han, I felt like that was it. But 
everything else up to that. I just didn't like, I don't know if I didn't like him or I didn't like the character that they wrote into the script because he didn't seem, they, um, even Kira, she came in and she was talking him up. Oh, he's so, you know, oh, he's so handsome. He's so this, he's so that. And then, you know, he lets uh, Beckett just walk all over him with the uh, 25%. You're going to get Yeah, 25%. Beckett, Beckett took him down real quick. I was like, dang, Beckett just like <laughs> ate him up. All the way down. Dang. Like, he didn't, you know, he just didn't have, I don't know. It, 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 he just didn't have that um, that suave thing all the way through his character. I mean, uh, I understand, you know, uh -huh. in action, action, you know, scenes, you got to, you know, have the emotion in it. But I just didn't. Maybe my expectations were too high because really I was I was going to the movie for Lando. Like I was going to it for Donald Glover was in all of the advertisement that I saw. So I cared more to see Lando than anything else. So maybe my mm -hmm. expectations were too high. Um, I felt let, let down that we didn't get enough Val. We didn't get enough Dandy Newton. Um, her character was killed off first in the beginning. Uh, she just sacrificed herself. And, um, you know, I, I like Dandy Newton. And I think her right. part was great. You know, but her it didn't impact um, you know, Beckett as much as it should have. They they showed they had that that scene in the beginning where they, you know, oh, you um you, it's not good to die alone, you know, everybody should have someone else. And Beckett, you know, just kind of went off and was Beckett, you know, for the rest of the movie. Like that her sacrifice didn't impact him the way it should have. I didn't think I didn't feel like um, and you know, and you notice that uh, the new thing now is for, is that black people die second. Like we, black people don't die first anymore, right. unless it's Infinity War, you know. But now you kill off the alien, and then you kill off the black people. You see how we appease the black people? <laughs> slowly but surely, surely, slowly. Um, and um, L three, I um, I felt like L three was a little bit over the top. She was just, I mean, she was cool. She was um, funny, but she was just a little bit over the top. And like that, her just, y'all do whatever you want to do. Y'all, we, we're doing this like special mission where we're trying to bring this, this highly sensitive material back mm -hmm. and, and, you know, prevent all of us from getting killed. And I'm just going to let all these robots go run amok like that. <laughs> I mean, like that just didn't seem like the smartest thing to do, you know, uh, <laughs> It, there was a, a lot of points in the movie where um, I, I was just like, why? And um, I, I really liked um, Dryden Voss. What, it was Dryden Voss? What was his yeah, name? Uh -huh. Vision? Vision? This is a Vision. Vision. Um, Scar Vision. I like um, Scar <laughs> Vision. <It was> cool. <laughs> Scar Vision. <laughs> We'll bring the things up. Scarred vision. Wow. <laughs> uh oh, he was cool, but you know, he, he was just kind of there to be like um, the the job of the. And I mean, he was kind of like the the. Okay, I'm. I have her as my you know my sex slave. Um, so you know to motivate Han and to and to stick it around, you know. Um, but their scenes were really cool. It was really cool, but it, the character stuff it was just not right. And then um, the um. Infus Nest. Okay, so I really did like what they did with Infus Nest. Like, you know, they um, had her show up at the beginning. You know, she did the bad, the moves. You know, she, you know, was the was the was the the other villain, and then she turned out to be, you know, actually the one of the leaders of the rebellion and all mm -hmm. that. But it just wasn't. I didn't feel like okay. They've been this entire hour and a half. They've been trying to. Han has been doing this one thing, trying to get this money so I can get my ship so I can leave with my girl and I can, you know, do my own life. And this girl, this freckled, freckled red hair girl, mm -hmm. you know, shows up and says, you should do the right thing. Uh, these people got their tongues cut out. They grew up on on this planet where people were getting beat up all the time. They weren't trying to help them then like they weren't trying to help people out then. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. I understand she was, you know, she was a sweet young girl, but that's enough for you to change your whole life around just because, you know, the girl says, "Hey, you should do the right thing." I mean, mm -hmm. I understand it was it was a theme of the movie. I just it just wasn't impactful enough for me. Um, but like I said, I did enjoy watching the film. I enjoyed it. Me and DJ had a good time. Like he was when Darth Maul popped up, he was like, "Huh, oh, oh, that's uh, huh." Oh. 
I did the same thing when I saw him uh, pull his pull his uh, robe off top, and I was like, "Oh!" Like I looked at DJ, like, "Do you know?" Like, "Do you know?" <laughs> <laughs> do you know? <laughs> so that was cool. you know, it was it was a really wild wild ride. But like I said, if it's Disney, it's Star Wars, so it has to. It just it's got to be that next level. Like it's got to be there. And for me, it just wasn't on every, on, on all the cylinders that it needed to be, but it was a good movie. I don't, I don't understand all the super hate that's coming out about it, but um, it, it was a good movie. It, it, it was a good, it was a good film. It just wasn't Disney good. So yeah. <laughs> those, those are my controls. Hey man, it, hey, it was definitely next level because it's a whole level above the last Jedi. And that crap that they've been putting out on on the other end. So enjoy yeah. the last Jedi. Though. I'm sorry. I can't stand. I can't stand last Jedi. Oh I lord, know. here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Wasn't that, that was our first show. Y'all need to go watch that first show. We need to put that up. So was it? Was it? Yes, that was our first show. Oh yeah, wow. Last Jedi. Like we need Damn, to go edit that one. Add some pictures into it or something. <laughs> it wasn't bad. Yeah, back up there. But, Maybe uh, cut it down from like an hour. <laughs> we know went on forever on that show. It, it oh boy! All right, Charlie. By the way, I saw when I saw um, Darth Maul. Like as soon as I saw his legs, I said, like, "That's Darth Maul." Like I didn't even see. Like I knew he got his legs cut off, and I I knew it. You know, throughout the cartoon series that they had been doing stuff with them. So I was like, "Oh, smack Darth Maul!" So yeah. Oh wait, so this is after? Oh wait a minute. So this, this is after like, Obi Wan cut his legs off. Oh, I didn't even realize that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he's alive. Yeah, he's alive. <laughs> can can Jedi's ever die, or the bad guys in they ever die? Just get pieces of their bodies cut off and just stick a machine on them? Oh, Snoke is dead. He's dead. <laughs> Obi's dead. Remember that movie? Remember they made a deal about him falling dead. over. In a pile on the ground. Yeah, he's dead. So sure. He's about to be the only one. I'm not so sure about that. Don't just come back in somebody else's body or something. I think so. If he ain't That's dead, nice. he had the most embarrassing death of all the time. I mean, he literally, they literally came back in the scene and he's sitting there like, oh, he might be dead. He might be alive. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's dead. he's dead. He's actually dead. Yeah. No, I, don't really, I wouldn't even <laughs> want to come back from that. <laughs> what about you, Charlie? How did this movie fail? Uh, I mean, I don't think it failed, but I guess some of the things that I, I didn't, I guess that they could have done better was making you care about the characters. I didn't really care about them dying. It was a fun ride, but if they died or they, you know, it's just like World One, everybody died, you know, I wouldn't care. I, I knew Solo wasn't going nowhere. I knew Lando wasn't going nowhere. Um, mm -hmm. I think that was about the only safe ones I saw because I saw, everybody else was got, like new characters. It seemed like, oh, and right. Chewbacca. Chewbacca was a good one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I would have cared if Chewbacca knew, died. If he had died, I knew I all them won't go, go nowhere. So it's like it took like I guess the impact of some of the scenes. Like, well, I know you're not gonna die because you're on all <laughs> these other movies. So what's gonna happen that's gonna you know be unexpected? That might be why they just kind of just had unexpected things happen throughout the movie because you knew certain people weren't going to die because they just, you know, had that shield fits future type of thing. Like, I can't die because I saw myself in the future type thing. So, mm. you in other movies played by other actors, you're not going to die. So, we don't have to worry about you. <laughs> but I guess just having us kind of feel a little more. Like, I know with Rogue One, I know they all died at the end, but just like you felt for a lot of the people that were dying. Like you saw, they were given everything just to get this one piece of knowledge to save everybody, mm -hmm. like, you know. So you kind of felt for them. So that was a different type of movie. This one was like, oh, this is fun. It's funny. <laughs> oh, he died. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, all those people died? Why is she just sitting up there? Why? I would have jumped. I'm sorry. I wouldn't have just stayed up there with the explosive. You know, at least try. I'm not going to just stay here because he doesn't uh -huh. even care about you. But uh, Beckett, <laughs> Beckett was just worried about his money. He's like, right. <laughs> so uh, I think they could have could do a little bit better with that. Also with the robot, I think uh, like Toro said yes, the robot was a little, a little too much. Like it had 
it had its points and we were funny, but it was like, okay, enough with you, robot. You're a robot. <laughs> <Chill> you. out. <laughs> like, you ain't humanoid. You ain't nothing. Like, stop talking back. You ain't robot. Like, just do what you're supposed to do. And, you know, every five seconds, like, revolution this, revolution that, talking back. Like, I just want to give her a lot of scenes. Like, come on. She was funny. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, I was entertained, but it was like after a while, I was like, okay, this is a little much. I looked at Rogue One the other night, and I was like, that uh, the robot on there is like he was like perfect. Like he just like he he jumps in the scenes, and makes his comments, does little funny things, and then he's gone. You know, you don't have to just like he doesn't just stand there awkwardly like. <laughs> done. Are you done? I mean, like, you got something else to say? Because as soon as I start talking, you're going to say something smart. So, I don't know. But, yeah, she was cool, but they kind of had her had her go a little too a little too long. Um, I don't I don't really know about the tie-in. Sometimes it seems like they tried a little hard with some of the, um, I guess, tie-ins to some of the other movies. But I, I don't think that was necessarily that bad. I mean, just the... Uh, I like Darth Maul at the end of the movie, but I didn't think that he had to be there. It kind of, kind of mm-hmm. like, I don't know. Maybe I, I don't, I don't think the Star Wars they don't do like the, like the um, after credit type scenes or anything, right? All right. Just in the movie. Okay. I would like to see something like him, like in a credit thing, a scene, like to see him just pop up and then she just flies off with him. I was like, I just didn't really understand her as like why is she doing this? Like, she just killed the dude. And she uh, does she want to be in power? I guess I just didn't understand her character enough at the end. Like, what uh, yeah. do you want? Like, you don't want to kill Solo. You love Solo, but you don't love Solo. Like, you could have just act like you died and never told anybody anything and just dipped with the name, you know, stuff and been fine. But she mm. was, she was a little strange to me. So I don't know what they're gonna, what they're gonna do with her on the next yeah. ones. I Maybe get her some dragons. You know, some space dragons. <laughs> That's my girl. Though. I need the white hair back. I miss her. Can't wait to Game of Thrones season eight comes out. I'm beyond that, son. You know, uh, Game of Thrones, the um, Amilla Clark, the lady who played Kira. I, I never knew it. Yeah, bruh. That's that's that is Game of Thrones. She she her and uh Jon Snow. That's the that's yeah. that's the team right there, bro. I keep saying that I, I keep saying oh. it, but I never, I never just get into it. You got, you got to just, you got to watch it one, one day, one, one couple weekends. You no, know, just watch a season or two. It's good. It's good. It, it gets you. In, it gets you. In. I didn't think I would like it, but I'm, I'm connected. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think that's um, I think that's about all I would say. That I can think of like where it could have done a little better with the movie. Okay. But I don't also like it. You you had mentioned that uh K2 SO is, is perfect. But the the best line in that whole movie for Rogue One is when uh, he walks up to uh, to Jen after everybody walks away. It's like, I'll be there for you, Jen. <laughs> Cassian says I have to. <laughs> 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 The sarcasticness of that dang story was hilarious. Oh boy, how did this movie fail? Okay, this movie failed in pacing. Pacing was a was a big issue. Like um, after the train scene, which was the the second chase scene, like you had us, like you had us. Well, we were there. Like, oh man, this is awesome. It looks good. It's exciting. And then, all right. So now you have to have Han and Chewie follow Beckett. All right, cool. Oh, we're good. Then we have to have Han see Kira again. All right, I'm, I'm good with that. Then we got to meet Dryden Voss or Scarred Vision. All right, I'm, I'm cool. All right, now we got to meet Lando. All right, then we got to meet L3. Okay, then we got to see the Millennium Falcon. All right, and then Han and Kira have to get some alone time. Like, it's a lot. <laughs> like, after the trade scene, it's a lot. Like, okay, like they, I felt like they could have paced, they could have separated that, put a little action right there in the middle. It's like they had to get all of the ingredients together in order to make the next scene. Now, don't get it, don't get it wrong. The next two scenes that happened after that were really good. 
you know, the uh, the liberation scene and the uh, Kessel Run, both of those are good. It just it just took so while took so long to get the ingredients together to do that. You know, I really wish they could have done that different. Like also the the uh, the ending was a little disappointing. Like again, comparing it to Rogue One, I would say that's the number one thing that makes it less of a movie than Rogue One. Like you had us, like we were like, wow, like we were really up here again. The Kessel Run was great, and then you get to the final battle, and it's kind of like, you know. Versus Rogue One is the opposite. Like, it leaves the very best stuff to the end. Like, Rogue One was good all the way through, but Darth Vader, first of all, them dying on the planet and then Darth Vader showing up, like, that was just like, wow. It's like, that was awesome. Like, Darth Vader showing up made that whole movie. Like, the whole movie could have been 30 seconds of talking, Darth Vader, and then roll credits. I mean, <laughs> that's what made that movie. So when Han Solo came out, he had the final battle. There you go. He had the final battle, and and yes, we're all tired of seeing the uh, the bad guy pontificate. Like we're tired of seeing that. We all want to see. Yeah, why don't you just shoot this guy while he's talking? And then, so he did it. We got what we wanted. But then after that happened, we're like, oh, okay, I guess he's dead. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Let's go steal the Millennium Falcon. I mean, you know, this ending was just dumb. Um, and poor Lando. I'm kind of with you, Danny. I liked, um, um, what's his name? Yeah, Charles yeah. Gambino. Uh, <laughs> Donald yeah. Glover as, uh, as, as Lando Calrissian. But I don't think that, um, I don't think the story was done right for him. Because he got owned the entire movie. He got owned. Like, First, he kept losing money on the Beckett deal. Then L3 was killed. Then he got shot. Then he got his cape messed up. <laughs> then his ship oh, got girl wrecked. Took one of his tapes, too. One of his, the girl took him one of his capes, too. Yeah, they was all up in his closet. They was up yeah. in the closet. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> then he didn't get paid. Then the white man took his ship. I mean, you know. <laughs> I mean, what what a great what a great what a fitting ending, <laughs> you know. For this man. Like, you know, yeah, they played him. They played Lando. It's like somebody had a grudge against Lando. He's like he's gonna be. We're gonna make him cool, and then we're just gonna make him get owned this entire movie. So, I get it though. I wasn't completely upset about it because um, you could see that they were trying to say this is the karma. Like he's a cheater. And so if you're a cheater, this is what happens to you. I get that. And also I get the fact that eventually he, he own, ends up owning a mining colony. So he ends up doing really, really well. And then he actually ends up becoming the savior of the universe or the galaxy, at least, because I'm always going to be the one that gives the credit to Lando in Return of the Jedi for saving the universe. Because only thing that Luke did, yeah, he dealt with the Emperor, but... It didn't matter if the Emperor was dead or not. If Lando blew up the Death Star, the Emperor was done. <laughs> so Lando was the one that saved the galaxy. And one last thing, that didn't make no sense. Uh -oh. Kira jumping in during the end of the fight with scarred vision, that, that didn't make no sense. Like, he was fighting Han. All she had to do was walk up behind him and slice his head off, and that was it. But instead, she jumped in the middle of the fight and was like, no, no, that's okay. I'll kill Han myself. Pretended like she was going to kill Han and then did the backward thing where she killed Beckett. Like, that was way too convoluted. Like, why? What, what was that about? What was the reason for that? Yeah. You like, know, just kill the dude and be done with it. Yeah, she, this whole thing with her playing this mind game with him, well... Am I on your side? You're my. I'm your weakness. This all, all this mess. When yeah, you're right. She could have just cut the boy, cut your boy's head off, and she was confused uh, about her business. I mean, she, I guess that's cinematography, but yeah, I, I agree with you on that. I, for the time she was with those warm people for three years, she was just seemed like she just got confused. Like she does not know <laughs> what she wants to do in life. Like I don't know what Becky did to her, but <laughs> every every single moment she just basically does not make a decision. She just like just goes with the flow. Like, okay, I'm gonna like Han now. Oh I'm gonna do it back and say, I'm gonna betray somebody, and then I'm not gonna betray him. I wanna I be am I, am I gonna be a Jedi now or um, I'm gonna be um I'm gonna have the dark side now. She gonna be one of the she gonna be one of the uh using the force to the people. I'm gonna tell you what happened. Um scarred vision used the mind stone on her. 
put that <laughs> put that stuff in her head. Now she don't know what to do. Now she don't know. She don't know what was going she on. She's just go. I'm just here on this movie doing stuff. <laughs> Where are my dragons at? <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. The whole time I'm watching, I'm waiting for him to be like, Wanda, no one dislikes you, Wanda. <laughs> it's their amygdala. It's their, they have a subconscious, what is it, whatever he says. It's because of their amygdala. It's why they fear you. <laughs> like, it's like, that's vision right there, man. He's vision. <laughs> yeah, probably All right, guys. So, in closing, should people see this movie? And also, please give us your closing thoughts. Mr. Charlie Taylor. Yeah, I definitely think you should go check it out. It's a good movie. Like I said, um, I would check it out. I mean, IMAX or somewhat 3D to get the full effect because it's uh, yeah. very beautifully made. Uh, the music is great, um, but don't go in there. They just the best thing ever. So, uh, oh, that's okay. about it. You know, we here at KFH, you know, we're doing parties all the time, but I don't have anything right now upcoming, but we'll let you know when we got the next big event. So, see you guys later on next time. All right. Mr. Dead Quick, should people see this movie, and what are your closing thoughts? I don't know if I'm having a midlife crisis or <laughs> what, but <laughs> um, I really feel like, I don't know if maybe I watched too many reviews coming up to this movie, but I don't know if, like, reviews, even though I know we review and I enjoy doing this and we having fun with it. But don't let people's reviews of a movie stop you from going to see it. Please don't. It's so much negative negativity coming out that came out before this movie, you know, the weeks of it, this weekend, and talking about, you know, what's the lowest, lowest uh earning Star Wars film ever. The, go see the movie. It was good. It, I had a great time in the theater watching it. It was a good film. Go see it. Um don't let all of this stuff on social media tell you not to. If you if you're interested in that kind of stuff, go check it out. If it looks good, if the previews look good to you, if you like Star Wars, go see it. You'll have a good time. I mm -hmm. think so. Oh, and uh, uh, what's my tagline? What do I say? Uh, <laughs> Stay vigilant. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for me. Uh, I'm a little stuffy right now, but always go check out Ace Blade. We got more stuff coming out really, really soon. Um, but until next time, stay vigilant, my friends. I'm out. <laughs> you know, Danny, I know that we disagree on The Last Jedi, whether it was a good a movie or not. But I do think that this movie is suffering because of The Last Jedi. I think because um, fans were so divided about this movie, it has really soured the taste for anything Star Wars related after that. Like they have to really hit a big home run to get their fans back. And I don't think that Disney realized that. I thought they look I think they looked at the money that they made and say, oh no, we're good. We're doing good. Forget what dumb people forget what the haters say. We're doing good. And that's just not the case. That Last Jedi really hurt them. So I think that if Last Jedi had been a really if it had been a universally accepted good movie, then um Solo would have hit it out the park. But because of that, I think it really, really hurt this movie. And so that being the case, I really want to let people know, yeah, you should see this movie. It's it's a good movie. Disney is two for two as far as these reasons. Like Rogue One, I thought was a really good movie. And this is this is a good movie. It is not as good as Rogue One, but it is definitely a very good thrill ride. And uh, it's a good uh, preview to what happens in the original trilogy. So, yeah, I think that people should see this movie. Right. Thank you for checking us out on our show here, Color Commentary, as usual. Please make sure to give us a like if you liked it and leave a comment. Tell us where we're right. And then also tell us where we're wrong as well, because we like to hear that stuff. We'll tell you that you're wrong. <laughs> make sure you look in the uh, description so you can see other videos like this one, like we reviewed Cobra Kai recently, the YouTube sensational show. And we've done a lot of things about Infinity War and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D and Black Panther, all kinds of videos. Please make sure to, and also like Charlie said, make sure to go to our very first video and check out The Last Jedi. So again, this has been Color Commentary, where we give you views from the Jedi side. Peace. And it's gotta be And also make sure to subscribe to Survive. <laughs> <laughs>